let us very briefly uh, remind here the dramatic entanglement of the Polish-Jewish relations, because I do believe that this is uh, an essential starting point to this debate. I will, uh, I will point for three periods, just before the war, during the war, and just after the war. Before the war, it's uh, anti-Semitism uh, in uh, its various forms, economic boycotts, numerous clauses, numerous nulls at universities, uh, the attitude of the Catholic Church toward the Jews, uh, the anti-Semitic acts and pogroms in the second part of the 30s in Poland, um, uh, plans of massive Jewish emigration from Poland uh, perceived as a certain way of uh, uh, solve the so-called Jewish question, widely discussed in, in, in national and Catholic press. And during the war, Polish attitudes regarding Jews was shaped by their belief in the so-called Jewish betrayal, based on stories and gossips on the Jewish behavior after the Soviet invasion uh, in Poland in 1939, September 1939. I mean the Jewish welcoming Soviets, Jewish collaborating with, with, with <coughs> Soviet power, and so on. And in a whole spectrum of Polish attitudes towards Jews, the dominant one was indifference in all its shades, from sympathy to aversion. Sometimes it went from one extreme to another, from heroic saving Jews and to, to, to black men, robbing <laughs> them, and lastly, killing them. And just after the war, very crucial uh, 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 point, the myth of Zito Komuna and its significant role in shaping the public mood toward the Jews just after the war. The myth of so-called Jewish communists. <coughs> the new communist power was commonly or in, uh, in significant part of post-war Polish society associated with Jews and uh, with the alleged aggressive uh, attitude toward national uh, uh, tradition, national values, religious, Polish religious values and virtues. Both important and burning became the question of the Jewish property left behind in Poland after the Holocaust. The Holocaust destroyed virtually the entire Jewish community in Poland. The Holocaust turned the Jewish world to ashes. But the remains of this world were also disappearing after the war. This kind of situation, let alone a series of immediate post-war pogroms in Poland, uh, consisted in the communist government imposing step-by-step -step restriction of reviving social and cultural life of Polish Jews during 1945 and 1950. <coughs> until the final liquidation of political parties, social organizations, cooperatives, Jewish press. The last straw was a series of uh, immigration wave for Poland. And the, the, the biggest one, the great immigration wave uh, just after the Kielce pogrom in July uh, 36. On the whole, 36. Yes. Of course, 46. I mean, yeah, yeah, of course. 19, the 4th of July, 40, 46. And uh, on the whole, during 1945 and 47, around 160,000 Jewish survivors emigrated from Poland. The Holocaust experience was frequently subjected to manipulation before it could finally be profoundly and freely experienced and fought up. There were different ways to shun its acceptance, tame it, or exploit for political or ideological purposes. In communist Poland, which uh, its censorship and uh, the information monopoly 
the Holocaust fell victim to nationalized remembrance and the party's version of history. Let us briefly uh, refer to the press discourse uh, concerning uh, the anniversaries of the Warsaw Ghetto Prize. One can treat it as a perfect example of how imposed collective memory strives to control and shape certain historical experiences. The chief motive was, first, the competition and suffering, and the second, the polonization of a prize, making the uprising, in a way, Jew-free, human right. I recall this propaganda discourse from the time of Polish People's Republic because it is still valid at the present in public sphere revealing astonishing persistence. So the competition and suffering, that is to say that anniversary articles or speeches try to present Jewish martyrdom so that it does not overshadow the suffering of the Pope. The journalists try to defend the value of the Polish martyrdom, which is supposedly imperiled by the Jewish suffering. And the colonization of that practice, the, the Polish help for <coughs> a battle ghetto is one of the central motives constantly present in the anniversary discourse. A story about the Warsaw Ghetto Prize transforms into the story about Polish help and courage. The prize is presented as a pretext to show Polish heroism and help offered to the ghetto fighters and to demonstrate Polish-Jewish brotherhood of art. Uh, this tendency reached uh, its uh, culmination during state-sponsored anti-Semitic campaign in March 1968. After 1989, in democratic Poland, it became possible to hold an open public debate where all the participants openly articulated points. The time of political and economic <coughs> transformation brought re-evaluation and reconstruction of the traditional canon. Both process consisted in reclaiming those areas that had previously been controlled by the communist state and in restoration of memory. In this context, Holocaust remembrance was also revised and became one of the factors that determined the new approach to national identity in democratic Poland. It is worth remembering that before the storm Jan Tomasz Gross' publication Neighbors unleashed in Poland in 2001, <coughs> he published, Gross published in 1998 an important collection of essays titled Nightmarish Decade, three essays on stereotypes concerning Jews, Poles, Germans, and Communists, 1939-1938. This is this Nightmarish Decade. I will quote a few lines from Gross, for I do agree with I quote, the Holocaust, not a choice of the Poles, took place on Polish soil, and in front of Polish eyes, and is part of the Polish faith. Are there any other so universal Polish experience as the Holocaust? As Gross, adding that the Holocaust reveals, I quote, something like the heart of darkness in our collective experience. However, this truth finds its way to collective consciousness with great difficult. The goal of the Polish Center for Holocaust Research, established in 2003 in the Polish Academy of Sciences, I, 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 I have an honor to, 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 to be a member of it, tries to answer to the challenge. Let us briefly enumerate the key features of the, this, this new approach. Number one, interdisciplinary character of research. Uh, the aim is to combine different methodologies, uh, hi historical, psychological, social uh, uh, studies, as well as anthropology of culture and uh, uh, discourse analysis. 
The crucial point is to make the investigations as comprehensive as possible in order to penetrate the various aspects and dimensions of the Holocaust experience, to penetrate different types on, of individual and collective memory. And finally, to explore various strategies of commemoration and forms of Holocaust presence and representations in public life. And number two, uh, the rare uh, used or new kind of sources. This is very important. I, I, I certainly I skip the references to, to, to authors and, and books. For instance, the whole realm of uh, the German sources. German sources. For instance, the, the sources of of of, of Sondergericht Warschau, special courts uh, uh, in, 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 in in Warsaw, are are very valuable for for the Holocaust study. Another very important source is so-called August Decree. It is the first act of criminal law passed by the Communist Polish Committee of National Liberation of Lublin on 31st August 1944, which specified punishment for war crimes, the crime of collaboration, crimes against humanity, crimes against peace. And this collection is, is of course known to uh, historians, but virtually unused for research of Polish-Jewish relations during the war. And particularly this collection reveals an entire spectrum of negative acts committed against the Jews by Poles, including blackmails, robberies, and killing. And number three, the new, new research areas. The center aims to carry out open and free research of the particularly hot or sensitive topics of Polish-Jewish relations, neglected for non-substantial reasons. These are no doubt uh, the issues of uh, broadly understood collaboration, both Polish and Jewish, and the problem of blackmailers. Uh, among thematic areas, either completely unexplored or explored insufficiently, there is the question of Polish-Jewish relations in the provinces in the small uh, towns outside the big cities, and first and foremost in, in the country. country was completely neglected uh, in, 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 in Polish Holocaust study before. And there, in the country, there are most drastic and extreme facts of killing Jews by Poles. <coughs> I do believe that in such an approach, there is hope for a more profound academic debate on the extermination of the Jews and Polish-Jewish relations during the war, but first of all, to go beyond the traditional and increasingly unproductive polemic between the critical and the apologetic approach. I would like to point one significant example, relevant for public discourse and uh, uh, also for, for, for academic debate. I mean, the fiasco of the apologetic approach to the question of saving Jews in Poland. <coughs> there are three demons that threaten the Polish discourse of saving Jews. One, the demon of competition. The martyrdom competition, the competition in unselfishness, the competition in, in nobleness, and the second, the demon of statistic. There is a, 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 an obsession, compulsion of counting the righteous, of counting these who help Jews. In order to justify the thesis, the more, the better. And three, the demon of trivialization, mass scale activity to help the Jews poses as a challenge to heroes. It is contradiction. If everyone could help the Jews, then there is nothing to say about the heroes. In such a discourse, the righteous and the saved Jews lose their importance and are excluded from the historical process, becoming merely a tool uh, in a political game. The very discourse of saving Jews has two sides. 
sides, like, like, like a coin. On the bright one are placed heroes, sacrifice, altruism. On the dark reside fear, betrayal, blackmail, evil. Two sides, bright as well as dark, are, in my opinion, inseparable. The story of saving Jews should be treated as a whole and cannot be triumphantly incorporated in the heroic national legend only. Saving the Jews was a heroic act of overreading a self-preservation instinct. Heroism is always something exceptional, beyond duty. If we do not accept this truth, we betray the righteous, the Jews who saved, who, who were saved, and banalize all, all, all situations. Over the last 10, 15 years, in Poland we have witnessed a curious paradox, I would say. On one side, fe phenomenon of overcoming existing scheme, petrified pattern in Holocaust narration, uncovering various cognitive uh, perspectives and points of view, uh, demonstration of the variety and ambiguity of historical fabric. But on the other side, a phenomenon of continuity and persistence. The model of old-fashioned apologetic narration from communist time, in a certain way, was substituted <coughs> by the model of narration determined by so-called historical politics. Such historiography, which drives an affirmation of core national values. In the Polish public discourse, the Holocaust seems to constitute our national identity. And this identity is torn between extremes. We were noble, heroic, altruistic, we say, the Jews on the mass scale, or we were persecutors, helpers, looters, blackmailers, murderers. It creates two separable narrations or, or parallel monologues. And it destroyed the dialogue in this indispensable in the public sphere in democratic country. In this indispensable like 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 air is is, is necessary for breathing. <coughs> there is a handful of discrediting expressions concerning the Polish Center for Holocaust Research taken from the Polish press from today. Uh, Pedagogics of shame, fascination of pathology, or plain black note. I will not comment on a question posed in one of the Polish newspapers I, 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 I quote. Why in the Polish academic institution the Center for Holocaust Research was established instead of a Center for Polish Martyrdom Study? This is real, this is, this is a genuine example. It's not my imagination. Uh, uh, Polish contemporary discourse about Holocaust is still imperiled, imperiled by ideologization and nationalization. That is, the Holocaust is still deprived of its core existential dimension and turn into an element of political struggle and combat for national values and true Polish identity. That is what I perceive now as a recurrence of tendencies from the time of the previous ideological era. Conclusion. The constraint to keep the appropriate balance between Polish and Jewish martyrdom or saying broadly, Polish and Jewish faith during the war seems to be still unavoidable in the public discourse about the Holocaust and Poland. It is as if one martyrdom could not exist without permanent confrontation <coughs> with another. 
as if it had to be confirmed in that confrontation and to defend its territory, which is constantly in danger. The books by Jan Tomasz Gross, The Neighbors, The Destruction of the Jewish Community in Yedwabne 2001, Fear, Antisemitism, Poland after Auschwitz 2006, and Polish edition 2008, and last book, Golden Harvest, Events at the Periphery of the Holocaust 2011, not only can test the false right to play a martyr's role, but also accuses Poles. It makes Polish readers, or, or, or the Poles in general, confront what God called the <coughs> heart of darkness. The polemics concerning these books verbalize what has not been verbalized publicly or what is sus suppressed in Polish collective memory. The national psychodrama takes place here. It's a, it's, a, it's a play with the Polish sense of guilt. This is a very important, very, very serious question. Gross have awakened Polish demons that have not been exorcist till now. Thank you.